I'm so happy to have Gate back in my life right now, dude. And this first episode, yo. Like, even though there was all but five seconds of my goddess Rory, which... I, I need to see more of my fucking goddess, man. There was no Kurabayashi greatness to speak of, and granted, they're trying to give Kurakawa more shine right now, which I actually respect and really like. Um... And yeah, I got to see my girl Pina, but there was no Fujoshi fangasms or anything like that. I was a little bit salty, but even with that, the episode was amazing. The pacing just diving headfirst back into the world of Gate, and I feel as though this core is even going to surpass the first one, dude. It's looking like it's going to be darker than ever with what I've seen in this first episode. We're going to dive heavier into the political aspects on both sides of the Gate and everything like that, the militaristic aspects. You see things moving, heavy character development, and I'm hyped right now. So Gate, episode 13. Air, season 2, Episode 1, Enryu Hen, Fire Dragon Arc. Ah, the first thing I need to say right now, that fiend Zoza, man. Like, as soon as I saw this, poor Tio, yo. I, I swear, she's so fucking sexy. And she was straight being abused, manhandled, and raped by the first Prince Ozal. Straight, and, and that's what I'm saying with this second core. It's going head first, diving in with how gritty and dark this series can potentially be. Like, the, the amount that they showed in that scene, him just straight spanking her and telling her to scream more and more, laughing maniacally. I was just like, yo, is this Kate? Is this fucking yeah? And I, it, it was funny too because my boy Ku was like, "Doesn't Solsal seem like Gilgamesh, but without any redeeming qualities?" And I'm like, "Yes, that same cocky and arrogant swag and, and demeanor that the man has, no fucks, bleeding confidence." But it seems as though there's a dash of freed cells had in his soul or something like that, just straight up because the man is a warped and psychotic prick. Even Peony didn't want him at the banquet. You saw her noticeably disturbed that her older brother showed up, and through all of his actions, yeah, there was some comedy surrounding it and everything like that. Like when he took the food and bounced after he was like, "Oh, this is disgusting." I hate this fucking prick. I truly do, but the air about him, he's no by no means, you know, a pushover. He's definitely dangerous, and I can't wait to see having him as an antagonistic figure in this series, because his father's already batshit. His father's already batshit, and he, and he has, the, you know, the king has yet to make any real moves, so to speak, and he's delegated everything, and now that you see the tension building up between, you know, the royal family and the senate and everything that's being influenced by the JSDF, I can't wait to see that aspect, as well as the political aspects on the other side of the gate and how it all ties together and where this this series goes from here man but i'm also hyped to see the fire dragon arc and you know get more into the new character that was introduced in, in yao which i fucking love her she's sexy as fuck i mean no one's transcending past rory even though yeah is amazing no one's transcending rory i'm sorry that's just uh, that's just me but I can't wait to dive into it. We got just a brief bit of her at the end of this episode, you know, at the bar, talking with the, the, the green-haired chick whose name completely evades me. And I believe the bunny bartender was the shady-ass bitch that we saw the shade surrounding her at the end of last season. But I digress. You see Yao, like, apologetic for her first encounter with the Tommy and everything like that, and wanting to find out what he cares for and what he holds dear and everything of that nature. Tommy... Not really getting much shine himself this episode, except for getting clowned in his little ambassador outfit at the beginning of the episode, and, you know, showcasing the, the weaponry to the senators and everything like that, and as well as the end with the earthquake buildup and everything like that, which is, is crazy, dude. It was a nice, tense way to end the episode. Not much of Tommy shine either, so... Even though this first episode kind of straight away introduced the new character of Zolzal, introduced Tool, you know, we got to see the women and the, the horse of the Red Light District all pretty much, you know, different monster girls and everything like that, which I was loving them. You know, the man chick, Misery, who's talking to Kurokawa, and I'm loving that Kurokawa is finally getting some do shine because she, yeah, she had her moments in the first season, but getting into her character, I, I could potentially love her on that same level that I love Kurobayashi. Maybe, maybe. I mean, Kurobayashi is up there in my in my top five females in this series but still i like to see that and get those developments as well and how you know the, the the sdf was able to kind of liberate the district so to speak and how they're pretty much seen and the whole arnis hill base that they've set up is seen as as heaven amongst the people of this world and everything like that and how their very presence is affecting the lives of every single person in this realm and how that's going to play into the political elements and everything like that so 
I love the way the episode was paced and wrote down and kind of introduced Zolzal's character, you know, got into, you know, what's happening politically in terms of Pina and everything like that, and Sugawara being there as an ambassador, the whole thing of him trying to, you know, seduce, straight up slaying lollies, man, this this little lolly girl, the daughter of, of Marquise Castello, whatever his name is, straight up slaying her and getting into her head and into her heart simply to, you know, build good relations with her father and everything like that, I'm like, yo, this man doesn't play games, so fucking Sugawara out here, and... Just the episode as a whole, I just, I, I really, really like the progression of it. But, I can't, the, the new opening, fucking amazing. The ending, especially, new opening visuals and song, and the, the ending song and visuals. Like, just the whole package is fucking hype. It got me so ready for the second season, and I cannot wait to see where it goes, man. Opening it, visuals, like, fucking crazy. Like, I love how they intertwined a lot of iconic scenes from the first season, you know, showcase a lot of new things that we're going to be diving into with this arc, and the ending, fucking, dude, that, that ending is sexy as fuck, I'm sorry, like, I, I need to join the SDF, that's what that, that's what that ending tells me, I need to join JSDF, because I can get these girls, like, I, I can be with my goddess Rory in military attire, which looks fucking amazing, so, that aside, I'm loving what I'm, what I'm seeing with this first episode of season two of Gate, and I can't wait to dive into it and see where it goes, let me, I, I need more Rory, please, just give me my goddess next episode, I really do, can't wait to see what happens with this earthquake and everything like that definitely need more character development and a more focus on the central characters but i love how this episode branched out and was paced and everything like that and i can't wait to get into yao's character and everything and see where it goes so let me know your thoughts on this first episode of gacy you know season two and i'm out peace